Okay, so progressing on. This look, rig's looking quite good. Things are starting to work quite well. We've got the squat and stretch in there. We've not had many problems really. Um, all seems to be working well together. We just always want to keep testing things like the global scale, see if it's working along. You can see things like here, the mouth staying behind, but we're going to cover that in the facial animation lessons which will be coming soon up after this. If you do want to get this to follow along, you could do the same thing as the eyes up here, you know, get to point constraint down to the controls down here. One thing we can see the eyes here looking a bit comical <laughs> with a smiley face, it looks even more funny. You can see that um, the scale isn't scaling those eyes. Again, if we move this up, his eyes are like little marbles. So, just want to keep testing that so we can keep seeing what we need to fix. So that was these two groups here, so I'm just going to select the global control um, select those two groups Oops, it was the eyes and just go to um, actually select them individually, so constraint scale and hit G for the second group and we can scale it up, see that's working okay we don't really want to scale constraint this models group because again this is going to contain the skin here so we don't want to uh, scale the character up because the character is getting scaled by all these joints that he will be, he will be skinned to which and the next few tutorials are going to be dedicated to skinning so before we just move on to skinning we just want to make sure that we can sign off on this rig and signing off is basically um, we want to sign off on a phase before we start the next phase so before we started animating we'd want to make sure we want to sign off with the rig to make sure the rig works the rig you know there's no problems in there so when the animate starts animating they're not going to get any problems like the stretch stops working because in that case if we fix the stretch by editing the rig by editing the rig the old animation that he's done might not work correctly with the new rig so we want to sign off on the rig make sure it's all done and dusted before the animator starts animating the same with the model we want to check for any edge loop errors any you know areas we want to clean up if there's any bad topology we want to do that before we start skinning so that when we skin you know we don't have to go back to the modeling phase the same with the texturing so I'm going to open up the UV texture editor so windows UV texture editor we want to just check and this has been set up whilst we modeled it but just checking that you know we can sign off on that the UVs are good it's going to work with the texture so we don't need to edit that so now we could move on to the skinning phase and the last thing we want to do to sign off on this rig is just start to clean things up so we have this temp group here which was a few it's like these ribbons so I'll show isolate, isolate selected view selected just so I can see that group we have these ribbons in here so I'm not actually going to delete this group I'm going to keep this in here and then delete it before animation because as we did with the arms and the antennas we did add some twist controls in there afterwards so I always want a copy of the original ribbon nerve surfaces so that way as we start to rig this some of the joints you know some of these controls might actually move the ribbon that's being used to rig so keeping these we have a pure copy that, that will work for blend shapes so I don't really want to delete this group just yet I'll delete that before animation and the same with the blend shapes group we could actually delete some of these not these but some that we'll use for facial, facial animating later on because some blend shapes you can actually apply as a blend shape and then delete the actual mesh and the blend shape node will remember all those changes but for this we're just going to keep that there so I'm going to keep the temp group I'm just going to hide that and that will get deleted before animation um, so I'm going to show isolate view selected to get back to the normal view ok the skin we've been using for the default skin you know just to test this rig I'm going to delete that because I don't need it I'm going to go to hide the mesh just check that we've got the right mesh in there hide the control curves so we can see these eye controls are created afterwards, so I'll re add them, add selected. Okay. It's looking good. 
again with the global move I'm going to select the joints and the IK controls groups and invisibility just set to zero because we don't need to see them anymore or actually before we do I'm just going to double check that as we rotate this we can see nothing's flipping out because a lot of the time when you, as you start to rotate stuff especially with spines you sometimes get the twist not working correctly but I can see that's working okay so I'm going to select the joints the IKs groups and just hide them so I'm happy the work I don't need to see them anymore we'll come back to them when we're skinning but for the moment I can just hide them okay so what we need to do now and again you can see with these eye controls we have the problem where it's reset the colour so actually I'm going to select all three of these remove selected from the control curves group the layer sorry go back and instead of on the shape I'm going to, on this main one here I'm just going to change it back to yellow I'll do it on the shape as well just so we don't get that change in, in the future and then the same with its the eyes switch it to the red and the same with the blue so I'm applying it to the actual curve and then also the shape node just so in future whatever it's parented to or whatever layer it's in we're always going to get that blue colour ok so the last thing we need to do really is block and hide some of these channels so the eye controls here, the, you can see the scale is doing something so we could keep the scale on there if we wanted to but for the most part like the scale here this is this is really the only axis, moving it up and down and scaling the Z is not really doing much the scale X is making the eyes go wider and smaller I mean you know like going bog eyed but we can get the same with moving these controls in which I, c I prefer so for that control I'm just going to lock and hide the scale and also the visibility because I don't want to key the visibility so I'm hiding a lot of these because I never want to edit the scale, I never want to edit the visibility so having them there if I was to press S or Shift W, Shift E to set keys on this I don't want to set keys on the scale because that would that would add free curves to the graph editor and then the same for the visibility and I'm not really fussed about them so I don't want to see those curves in there it's just going to clog up the graph editor when I'm trying to refine the animation so by locking those I'm going to save myself a lot of time same with the rotate Y and the rotate X I'm going to lock those two lock and hide selected we can always bring these back I'm just locking them so it doesn't key them because I'm not fussed about keying them I'm going to keep the rotate Z in there because we could get some nice bog eyed animation in there so that's one rotate I'll keep it there the same over here uh, the scales not really doing anything for us we could hook that up if we wanted to but I'm not really I don't really want to do that not for this character so I'm just going to go through and then if we did want to hook it up later on we could just unlock them and hook it up I'm just going to take those and again with the visibility lock and hide selected and the same with this top one here so I'm keeping the translates and rotates on these because I want to you know, be able to edit all these moving down again the scale's not going to do a whole lot so I'm going to lock and hide selected and one thing I'll just actually just out of curiosity I'm going to bring back the joints and just see if I get this controller so we could hook up the scale you know to these um, controls which in turn will scale up the nub surfaces of the ribbon so you could add some scale in there if you want and then you could get some sort of distribution so the scale of these controls 
scales up these ribbon joints so for instance if you scale up this chest it would scale up these joints around here you know and it has some sort of fall off of scale that way you could get it to you know so you could e add even more functionality to the rig but um I'm not that's not gonna really gonna get used much so I'm just gonna lock that. The same for the visibility. Lock and hide selected. So it's just a case of going through attributes that the animator doesn't need to see, doesn't need to key just so they have access to what they need to. And you can select multiple controls, lock and hide select at the same time. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to lock that actually, yeah. Because again, because we've got them in, you know, add them. Because we've got them in a layer, we can just hide the entire layer to hide the controls. We don't want to key each individual uh, bit. So selecting these again, lock and hide the visibility. Do the same for these controls, and we want the Y and the Z so we want the movement on this plane but we don't really need the translate Z on this so I'm gonna hide the translate and also with the rotate on these controls rotation is not doing anything for us so select these two translate Z, the rotates and the scales lock and hide selected. So basically here we're only working with two axes. So any keys, there's only going to be two curves to the animation, two sets of keys to work with. So it's going to be a lot easier. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole of the body. And then moving on to the arms. Select so both wrist controls. Scale and visibility again, it's not doing up for us. So lock and hide selected. The rotates on the and translates are working on them. We need them for IK and FK. Talking about IK, don't really need to scale, I mean, don't really need to move the IK, they're only there for the rotation. And also the scale, the scale is working in the X axis, so we don't need the Y and Z. So, and also the visibility. Visibility is hooked up, we can see it's coming from a connection in the um, in a graph, so it's, it's getting some connection through nodes, so that's the IKFK switch but we can lock and hide it just so we can't key it and we can't see it so oops, uh, lock and hide selected same on these two bend curves scales not doing up for us so scale and the rest lock and hide Okay, and then one last thing, if we just move back to FK, uh, move to IK, sorry. You can see we have these pole vector constraints. Again, these have got visibility. We can lock and hide it. So it's still got that connection there, but we can't edit it. We can't set any keys on it. And we'll just take the rotates and scales and lock and hide those. Because, again, the rotations of these isn't going gonna, isn't gonna to do anything. Okay, so, oops, one last thing, the clavicles. Translate of these isn't doing anything, so we'll get rid of it. And also the scales, lock and hide selected. Okay, so it's just important to get rid of them, so anytime we're setting keyframes, we're only setting keyframes on essential things, so things that need to be keyframed. If we have all the visibilities on these controls, so just looking at this, there might be like 20 or even more controls. So the visibility, if that's still there on each one of these controls, that's 50 animation curves that are going to be getting in the way. We don't need to see them, we can always just hide them with a layer. So it's just a way of getting them not to get in the way. The same with the visibility on these controls. Because the visibility was red, it means it's connected to a set of key. And much like the visibility on the FK controls, it was yellow, meaning it's got an incoming connection you know, through the nodes. 
if we have them still visible, anything that's visible in the view pot, anything that's visible in the channel box means it's keyable. So we could be pressing S to key all, and that could be keying, you know, the visibility that's connected to different things. So by setting keys, we could actually be, you know, overriding, you know, incoming connections. We could be overriding the visibility, which is controlled by the IKFK control. So that way, you know, Maya's going to get confused. It's either going to it's either going to listen to this control or listen to the keyframe data, but by locking and hiding it, that means you know the animator can no longer, you know, by accident, keyframe that. So it's just a way of keeping it nice and clean. So just go through, double check, and I think that's pretty much everything. Okay, so that's the rig, pretty much finished. Like I said, there's going to be. Um, another series dedicated to setting up the facial controls for this so it's going to be you know some extra eyelid controls because at the moment his eyes they don't really shut so we're probably going to add like some ribbon spines along here and get some nice eyelids and set up so like the nostril controls the mouth mouth controls so we can get some facial animation in there and get some expressions that's going to be covered in the next series but what we're going to do now, this rig's pretty much complete, we're going to move into the skinning of this rig.